How does one raise children? What does being caring, respectful, and ethical mean for kids? And as a parent, how do you practice this with them in a practical sense? Hi everyone, I am Bianca Pavotoy, and welcome to Our Peaceful Classroom. Our Peaceful Classroom is a dedicated space where parents, educators, and other professionals come together to talk about ideas on how to promote positivity and peace in the lives of children and teens. For today's episode, our speakers will discuss and share seven tips for raising caring, respectful, and ethical children. We are joined by Ms. Alpha Cristobal, Assistant Principal of Our Lady of Mercy School of Quezon City as our main speaker, and Ms. Nina Era, Associate Professor at the University of the East Manila as our reactor. They are both from the Family Studies Program of the Higher Education Unit of Miriam College. Let us begin. Good to everyone and welcome to our um, webinar, our peaceful parenting webinar on um, teaching our kids how to be caring, um, respectful, and uh, ethical, especially um, in this season or at this time also that we are all at home. Um, these are very abstract concepts like if you tell your child, okay, um, be kind or be respectful or um, do the right thing, what does it really mean in um, practical sense that they would understand. So we decided to just have this very short webinar and it's going to be um, interactive and informal. So we have two speakers today and they are both from the Family Studies Program of Miriam College. The Family Studies Program is the PhD program of Miriam College. It is offered at our higher education units. And um, they will be giving seven um, seven tips on how we may be able to promote um, kids who are um, caring, respectful, and ethical. And um, per tip, um, we will also have um, another speaker who's going to add in some comments. But what I would like and what we would appreciate is for the parents who are here, and I see that um, there are about 35 of you, um, and also probably um, our other experts in family studies to please put in um, other things or other ways which may be um, helpful in your respective families and um, we'll be sure to read them out also later on. So let's have that interactive session. So now please allow me to introduce to you our speakers um, for today. Okay, and we have two of them. Alpha Z. Cristobal is currently the Assistant Principal of Our Lady of Mercy School here in Quezon City. She has an MA in um, SPED or Special Education from St. Joseph's College um, of Quezon City and currently she's taking her PhD in Family Studies at Miriam College. Um, Alpha is a mother of two kids. Also we have with us um, Ms. Nina Era. Nina is an associate professor in uh, UE, College of Education. She is also a child, adolescent, and family specialist. Um, and she's connected with the Reintegration for Care and Wholeness Foundation. Um, she has an MA in Early Childhood Education here at Miriam College. And currently, she is finishing her dissertation for her PhD in Family Studies. Nina is a solo mother of is a is, is a sought after key opinion uh, leader and um, opinion speaker and um, sometimes you may have seen her 
sometimes you may have seen her on TV. Okay, so let's get started. Alpha and Nina, hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Okay, so let's begin. Maybe Alpha, you can begin. And for the rest, please make use of our chat box so that you can add in your own thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Doc Gail. Good afternoon, parents and my fellow educators. Uh, thank you for giving me a chance to talk for this parenting webinar of Miriam College Family Studies and Co-Teach Homeschooling Program. There is an experience I had 15 years ago after my husband and I got married. We plan to have a child right away. We wish to have four children to have a big family. But after being married for two years, I'm still not conceiving. Um, uh, we wish to have four children, like I said. But maybe it was wrong for me to make a, to make a deal with God. It ju it's just that I desperately wanted to be a mother. So after two years of negative pregnancy tests and heart-wrenching disappointment, I hit an emotional breaking point. I pray hard and talk to God. I ask him to bless me with a child and promise to raise the child, to know him and love him. This was a loaded state statement for me because I was not raised in the church. Yes, I'm a Catholic, but I'm not like a Sarado Catolico, the Candado de Suse de Padla. But I did end up getting pregnant, not just once, but twice. I seriously doubt my answered prayer had anything to do with the promise I made to God. Uh, gifting me with two amazing children uh, was uh, probably his plan all along. I just wasn't uh, being patient with his timing. So promise or no promise, God command us as parents to teach our children to know him and live by his word. It, it is our responsibility to provide a loving nurturing and God-fearing home environment with a day-to-day -day example of living a godly life. And it's our responsibility to raise a caring, respectful, and ethical children. That is the topic of our webinar for today. The seven tips for raising caring, respectful, and ethical children. Uh, next slide. Oh. The Bible teaches us to train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. I don't have all the answer as my children are still being trained up, but my husband and I have implemented or practiced some methods in our home. We believe will make a positive impact on the future of our children and their relationship or dealing with others and with themselves. So let's, uh, parents and my uh, co-fellow teachers, uh, let us uh, check out the seven tips in raising a caring, respectful, and ethical children. So number one, work to develop caring, loving relationship with your kids. So why do we need to uh, develop this kind of trait for our uh, children? Because children learn caring and respect when they are treated th that way. When our children feel love, they also been attached to us. Uh, that attachment makes them more receptive to our values and teaching. But how we can do this as parents? So um, loving your children takes many forms, such as tending to their uh, physical and emotional needs, providing a stable and secure uh, environment or family environment, showing affection, uh, respecting their individual personalities, taking a genuine interest in their lives, talking about things that matter, and uh, affirming their efforts and achievement. But how can we do, do this? Let's try this some tips. Sabi daw po, have a regular together and meaningful, have a regular time together and meaningful conversation. So maybe you, we can uh, plan regular, emotionally intimate time with your children or teens. Especially today that some, some of them may be anxious or overwhelming about their online tasks or online classes, with, online classes with lots of offline tasks that they need to accomplish. Whenever you have time with your children, take turns asking each other questions, 
that bring out your thoughts, feelings, and experiences. Ask questions such as, uh, uh, what was the best part of, of your day? What is the hardest part? Uh, what did you accomplish today that you feel good about? And what's something nice someone did for you today? And what's something nice you did for them? What's something you learned today in your online class or outside the school? So maybe th that's the question that uh, you can talk about. Miss Nina? Hello, everyone again. Uh, thank you, Miss Alpha. Thank you for this opportunity to speak to everyone. Hello, po, dear parents and uh, fellow educators. Uh, I truly believe in this uh, first tip. Uh, definitely connection is a very vital role in relationship building. Um, even with uh, the father of positive psychology, um, Dr. Seligman, one of the five core elements of uh, psychological well-being and happiness is relationships. Um, it's, you know, kids, um, they long for relationships at any age. Kahit po yan bata, kahit po yan teenagers, even if like they're older than teenagers, uh, my, my experience of being a single mom, uh, children are 24 and 22 years old, uh, I really didn't have that much of a major problem with the, except, of course, for uh, the usual lower a lower grade in math or they just need to um, attend a tutor in one of the subjects. Yung mga ganun lang po kasimple. But never was it really a, a super major problem because I feel that the relationship, it is something that I have really invested on. Uh, tama nga yung tinabi kanina ni um, Ms. Alpha. Really, um, dinner time and talking to your kids about their life. How are they? More than the grades, maybe we can ask them, Kamusta ka? Um, ano yung kamusta? Anong bago sa buhay mo ngayon? Or kamusta ang crush mo? Kamusta ang... Uh, mga kaibigan mo. Kasi a lot of times, I also hear this from my uh, counselees in uh, in RCW. A lot of them would uh, tell me, my parents are not interested with me. They only talk to me when they would ask my grades. But they never would really ask me, how am I? Or how, how am I feeling? Okay, so, napaka-importante po talaga nitong connection. Even in terms of um, disciplining our children, we can never correct them without connection. So, I, I highly encourage our parents, okay, connect with them. Okay, another probably one aspect that I'd like you to... Um, take note of. It also has been um, found out in different research that connection is also a protective factor in suicide prevention. Okay, sabi nga nila, if only one person just asked that person who was um, trying to think about uh, suicide, if you only, if there was only one person who asked, kamusta ka? Or how are you? Then it would have changed their mind. It probably would have made them feel that they are important. Okay, so kamusta? Connection is very much important. Miss Alpha? Thank you, Miss Nina. And the number two, be a strong, uh, be a strong moral role model and mentor to our children. Because uh, children learn ethical values and behaviors by watching our actions and the action of other adults they respect. Children will listen to our teaching when we talk, when we walk the talk. And that is true. So how we can uh, do this? Next slide po. Next slide. Okay, next slide po. Next slide. Okay, how we can do this? Uh, usually, our children are more affected by what their parents say. They learn how to behave by seeing how their mother or father behave and by following their example. 
uh, using social skills is a great way to model positive behavior and boost child self-confidence. A child learns ethical values and behaviors more easily if this will be part of their daily life. So let's try this some uh, tips po. Next slide. So number one, uh, do some service. Regularly engage in community service or model other ways of contributing to a community. Even, uh, even better, consider doing this with your child. Okay? Especially nowadays that there are some uh, victims of uh, calamities. So this is the time for us to uh, uh, show uh, the community service for our, uh, to our children. And then uh, next is um, honest, uh, honest and humility. Talk with your child when you make a mistake that uh, affects them about what you think you made it. Apologize for the mistake and explain how you plan to avoid making the mistake next time. So we parents are not perfect. We lose sometimes our temper, especially me. I had I had a son with autism. There are some uh, uh, series of tantrums wherein you plan for an activity and then magta tantrum siya. So sometimes I lose my temper in that situation. We are human. It is important to admit our mistake, say we're sorry, and show that we try to make things right. And uh, also, next po. Check in with others. This is very important to us. Okay? Check in with others. Reflect. Sometimes we need to reflect and consult with the people you trust when you're finding it hard to be caring or to model important ethical qualities like fairness. Sometimes in my experience, if I'm so stressed and then uh, stress in my work, stress in uh, house chores, I really call my friends okay? and then talk about anything and everything under the sun. And then, uh, and then I will... Uh, Open, open up my problem about uh, handling my child, especially my uh, eldest son. <laughs> and then uh, it's ano po, uh, very ano po, uh, comforting for me to talk with the others. Okay? And then also, it's very important to take care of yourself. We cannot give what we don't have. Okay? Sometimes tayo mga parents po talaga, we take care of all. Okay? But, uh, and, but we forget ourselves. We need to take care of ourselves. Whether it's spending time with your, with a friend, going for a walk with your husband, praying or meditating, try to make time to relieve your stress, both because it's important for you and because it will enable you to be more attentive and caring with others. Okay, so being a positive role model for our children is one of the most important and rewarding things we can do for our child. So, like I said, we are not uh, perfect, but let's. Uh, uh, be a role model to our children. Right, Miss Nina? Yes, agree 100%, uh, Miss Alpha. I remember a Nestle, I think if I think it's a Nestle commercial, ang maling ginagawa ng matanda ay nagiging tama sa mata ng bata. So, it's really it's really the parents who will be the role model of uh, the kids. I just want to sh uh, share to you a very brief story of my ch my when my children were still younger. Um, I took a U-turn and a no U-turn sign. And I didn't know that they already understood that it's a no U-turn uh, in that particular place. So when I took the no, uh, I took a U-turn and that no U-turn sign, my eldest daughter told me, Mommy, bakit ka nag-U-turn? Sabi ko, um, medyo ano ako eh, na, nalito ako. Hindi ko alam kung paano ko siya sasagutin. So, I just, um, ah, kasi anak, malayo yung natin, pwede naman tayong umikot na dito. And then what she answered to me really hit me big time. Sabi niya, Mommy, di ba, pag nag-check ka ng papers ng studyante mo, you always say, um, those who are not following directions, they will not be considered right. Okay, yung ano. So sabi niya, bakit ikaw, teacher ka pa naman, hindi ka sumusunod sa ano yung sinabing no U-turn sign. So it it really hit me big time. So from that time on, siyempre hindi ko naman po pwedeng sabihin sa kanya na, anak, wala namang police, so hindi ako mahuhuli. Hindi tayo mahuhuli. So it's even worse, di ba? So what I just said is, I am sorry, mommy's wrong. Um, I won't do it again. And promise po, they're like um, 24 years old now. That was like ages ago. 
I never did that again. Kasi natakot ako, nag echo yung, yung sinabi sa akin, na teacher ka pa naman, hindi ka su- sumusunod sa direction. So, I agree with that, Miss Alpha. Thank you. Thank you po, Miss Nina. And of course, number three, make, uh, make caring for others a priority and set high ethical expectation. Why? It's very important that children hear from their parents that caring about others is a top priority and that it is just as important as their own happiness. Okay? Even though most parents that most parents say that their children being caring is a top priority, often children are not hearing that message. It's not clear to them. Okay? So uh, a big part of uh, prioritizing caring is holding children to high ethical expectation such as honoring their commitments, doing the right thing even when it is hard, standing up for the important principles of fairness and justice, and insisting that, uh, insisting that they are respectful, even if it makes them unhappy and even if their peers or others are not behaving that way. So even they, they are young, instill to them that uh, this is the right thing. Okay, So it's hard for us, no? Kasi, eh, uh, sabi ko nga, be a role model. But sometimes we are not, uh, for, uh, sa atin, kumisa nakikita rin na uh, parang hindi, hindi naman na, na, ganon ang nakikita namin uh, to my parents. But uh, like I said, uh, these are some of the, ano po, uh, be aware for uh, on this. Okay? So as young as uh, their age, let us uh, talk about, uh, about respect, about the principles of, of fairness and justice. Okay, so how we're going to try this? Number one po, we should have a clear message. Consider the daily message you send to children about the importance of caring. For example, instead of saying to your children, uh, the most important thing is that you're happy. So you, uh, you all might say, the most important thing is that you're kind and that you're happy. Okay, and also prioritize caring when you talk with other key adults in your children's lives. For example, uh, if there is a PTC, ask teachers or the advisor whether your children are good community members in addition to asking about their academic skills, grades, or performance. That is important, how your uh, children behave in, inside the school. And also encourage kids to work it out. Be- uh, before letting your child quit in a sports or in an organization, a band or a friendship, ask them to consider their obligation to the group or to the friend. Encourage them to work out problems. So, parang don't give up, don't quit easily. Find the solution for uh, all of that. Okay? So, uh, Miss Nina, I, you're the guidance yeah. counselor and you encounter this kind of problem with our students. Yes. Oh, oh. Um, I'd like lang to add uh, about making caring for others a priority Mm -hmm. we definitely do not have the capacity to care for others when we do not have empathy but empathy is something very important to teach kids again just like values it's caught and it's not taught we are the Mm -hmm. first role models of empathy to our children so what i'd like to um, share to our parents who are listening now, if our child shares his or her feelings to us, what we have to do is to listen and validate their feelings because feelings can never be wrong. Um, a lot of times, kasi, uh, because of probably generation gap, um, we have the tendency to say, nung panahon nga namin, hindi naman ganyan yan, yung arte-arte nyo. But it, because I, I hear that a lot of times also from my counselees or from my clients, um, they would always tell me, um, is my feeling wrong? Why am I feeling this way? Because my mom, every time I would share this to my mom or I'd share this to my dad, um, the, the, the answer to it Sometimes, again, I, this is um, a Filipino, we become toxic, we have this toxic positivity, because we do not, we do not know how 
empathize. Diba parang pag sinabing dapat masaya ka nga eh kasi ikaw nga buti nga may ganyan ka. So parang of course we'd like to um, teach our kids to be positive but we also like to teach our children to be uh, to empathize and that whatever feelings they have it is valid and that they are validated by the significant people in our life so it's very important yung mga perspective taking po na mga tanong um we could ask that to our kids like for example uh, yung uh, kinakalat na mga laruan pwede niyo tanungin yung mga niyo how, how do you think mommy would feel if you do not take care of the toys I bought you from our earned money. ba diba yung mga ganun po? Nakakatulong yon sa mga ba para maintindihan niya na uh, oh, ang nga no, um, mommy would 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 be sad if I'm just not of these toys. So, when we also teach our children to care for others and have empathy, it encourages tolerance and that others and of course and of course we also teach kids how to respect and be kind to others okay miss alpha thank you miss nina of course number four uh let us provide opportunities for children to practice caring and gratitude so why because uh, children need practice caring for others and being grateful, it's important for them to express appreciation for the many people who contribute to their lives. Studies shows that people who engage in the habit of expressing gratitude are more likely to be helpful, generous, compassionate, and forgiving. And they're also more likely to be happy and healthy. So teach our, uh, our uh, children to uh, practice caring and having a, a gratitude. So let's uh, check out some tips to help children become more caring towards others and inculcate the sense of gratitude to them. So number one, uh, real responsibility. Expect children to uh, routinely help, for example, with household chores and siblings and uh, only praise uncommon acts of kindness. When these kinds of routine actions are uh, simply expected and not rewarded, they're more likely to become ingrained in everyday actions. And of course, make caring and justice a focus. Uh, let us uh, start conversation with, with children about the caring and uncaring acts they see in their daily lives or uh, on television and about acts of justice and injustice they might witness or hear about in the news, such as a person who stood up for an important cause or an instant uh, of a, uh, for example, a racism. Ask children how they see this action and explain why you think this action are caring or uncaring, just or unjust. And uh, expressing thanks. Consider um, making expressing grat gratitude a daily ritual or at, at dinner time, bedtime, in the car, on, on, the, on the subway. Encourage your children to express appreciation for family members, teachers, or others who contribute to their lives. So if we instill our children the importance of caring to others, they can now expand their circle of concern from the family to the others. Right. Okay, Miss Aka, salamat po doon. I truly agree as well uh, that we give opportunities to our children um, to practice gratitude and to practice caring. Um, if there's one, also one important lesson, I have learned from my dad who passed on four years ago is to always be thankful, to always have that attitude of gratitude. Um, rem I remember growing up, every time we are served breakfast, lunch, dinner by our kasambahay, um, my dad would always say, salamat sa masarap na kung ano mang ulam non or uh, salamat sa... Uh, magandang pag, uh, anong tawag nito, yung pagplansya ng aking barong, yung mga ganyan. And it was very consistent of him until really the day he died. And even with his own driver, he would always say, um, O oh, salamat, nako at nakauwi tayo ng buo at uh, safe. Yan, yung mga, yun yung mga linyang nadidinig ko po sa kanya. And it's something that I really um, also, I'm also practicing right now. I'm really very thankful. Even if, um, 
there would be challenges and problems along the way. Um, I would always make it a point to write down. I have a gratitude journal. Um, I always would uh, write three things I am grateful for every day. And it's also something that I have passed on to my children. Um, and it's also passed on to my clients. And they tell me every time they think about what they are thankful for every day, they they have that ano parang instant happy ano happy pill. Kasi nga naman, de ba? It's very unusual. Thankful ka pero malungkot ka. So parang it's always gratitude and then happiness. Okay? It's, it's something that should as parents. Um, of course, again, it's um, it's role modeling okay? that we teach our children this um, caring and gratitude attitude. Okay, going back to you, Miss Alpha. Thank you, Miss Nina. And of course, number five, expand your child's circle of concern. So almost all children empathize with and care about the small circle of families and friends. So our challenge is uh, help children learn to have empathy and care about someone outside that circle, okay? Such as a new child in class, classmate, someone who doesn't speak their language, uh, the, the school custodian, or someone who lives in a distant country. So how? It is important that uh, children learn to zoom in, listening closely and attending to those in their immediate circle, and to zoom out. Uh, taking the big picture and considering the range of people they interact with every day. Children also need to consider how their decisions impact a community. Breaking a school rule, example, for example, can make it easier for others to break rules, especially in our, in more, in our more global world. It's important to, for our children to develop concern for people who live in other cultures and also in community. Okay? So... What are the things that you can try for, uh, on this? So children are facing challenges. Next, uh, next slide po. Okay, going back po muna ulit. Okay, yan. So uh, children facing challenges, uh, encourage children to consider the perspective and feelings of those who may be vulnerable, such as a new child at school or a child experiencing some family trouble. Give uh, our children some simple ideas for taking action, like comforting a classmate who was teased or reaching out a new student, okay? And then zooming out, use a newspaper or a TV story to start conversation with children about other people's hardship and challenges, or uh, simply the different experiences of children in another country or community who uh, experience bullying or uh, some uh, uh, discrimination. And also, the most important is listening. Emphasize with your child the importance of really listening to others, especially those people who may seem unfamiliar and who may be harder to immediately understand. You know, I had a son with autism, and, and I'm not worried about him because we give everything that he needs, that uh, education, um, therapy, everything that he needs uh, uh, to his uh, condition. You know, parents, I'm worried about the other children, how they will treat my, uh, my child with autism, okay? So I, I'm, I, I'm asking to the parents to uh, teach our children to understand the uh, children with special needs. So kung ganun po lahat ng mga bata, talagang they will love and understand the children with special needs, um, at komportable komportable po ako at masayang masaya po ako na hindi ako matatakot na 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 ang aking anak ay may autism sa so, po okay miss alpha i also agree with that yung expanding your child's circle of concern mm -hmm. uh, children learn how altruistic behavior by how adults in their lives model it um, this is the perfect time to teach that to our kids. With the loss of a uh, job, with the loss of some, uh, some homes, um, financial uh, capacity. So children should be more yun nga, empathetic and would feel, uh, the, uh, would feel that I would want to do my share to help others. 
Okay? Yung as parents, we encourage our children to give something okay, that they have. It's not just something that they don't like anymore. Well, sa amin po kasi, I remember also my dad on this, um, when we are asked to share, we do not just give away something yung yung hindi mo na ginagamit. Of course, you can uh, put that also in the box. But he would always encourage us to give something that something something that is still useful to us, but we would like to share it to other people. Kasi po, di ba, mas mahirap magbigay. Yung, yun yung tunay na pagbibigay. Yung medyo hin, kailangan mo pa pero ishishare mo siya sa ibang tao. Um, I also remember my kids before when they were still little kids. They saw street kids, of course, and then they would tell me, Mommy, bakit sila nandyan? Nasaan ang parents nila? Ba't sila umiikot sa, ano, sa, sa daanan o sa kalye ng, ng ganon? Sabi ko, ang, ang, the only explanation I remember that I gave them was, they do not have parents who are ready to take care of them. That's why they're here in the streets. So sabi nila, buti na lang hindi ka ganon, mommy. That was their answer to me. So since then on, um, every time they would see these kids, okay, every time we were going somewhere, they would already have like loot bags in the car, kahit ano lang, um, sky flakes or whatever. Um, they put it there and then they would see in the so siguro po mas na doon sila nagkaroon ng kamulatan diba? na I'd like to share my blessings to others and also I'd like to, to to feel what they're feeling kasi nga kawawa sila they're just there and that they do not have probably parents who are taking care of them so it's really um, parents should teach this early on to children that they have their circle of concern Okay. Thank you, Miss Alpha. Going back to you. Okay. Thank you, Miss Nina. And number six is uh, to promote children's ability to be ethical thinkers and uh, positive change makers in their community. Why? Why do we need to uh, teach this? Because children are naturally interested in ethical questions and grappling with this ethical question can help them figure out, for example, uh, what fairness is, what to do what they ha uh, what to do when they have complete conflicting loyalty loyalties children are also often interested in taking leadership uh, leadership roles to improve their commu their uh, commu uh, communities they want to be uh, forces for good many of the most impressive programs to build caring and respect and to stop bullying cruelty for example have been started by children and youth okay so we can help children become ethical thinkers and, and leaders by listening to and helping them think through their own ethical dilemmas, such as, uh, should I invite my new neighbor to my birthday party when my best friend doesn't like her? At the same time, you can provide uh, opportunities for your children to fight injustice in their communities and to uh, strengthen their communities in other ways. Okay. So what are the things that we can do for this? So taking action. Yes. Po. Encourage children uh, to take action against problems that affect them, such as, for example, cyberbullying or an, uh, on an unsafe street corner. Uh, joining up, provide opportunities for uh, children to join causes, whether it's reducing homelessness, supporting uh, uh, children's education in developing uh, in a, in a uh, remote area or depressed area, uh, calling attention to the plight of abused animals or any area that is of interest to them. And also doing with. Encourage children not just to do for others, but to do with others. Working with uh, diverse groups of students to respond to community problems. And also thinking out loud with your child. Uh, start a uh, conversation about ethical dilemmas that uh, arise on TV show. Or give children, uh, or uh, or give children ethical uh, dilemmas to grapple with at meal times or in other situation. What should they do when a schoolmate tells them bad things about another child? When uh, when they see someone cheating on a test or stealing, when they've done something wrong and are afraid to admit it to their parents or caretakers, 
sometimes my daughter uh, uh, always ano ask me when uh, she was uh, uh, nursery sabi niya mommy bakit po kaya yung mga classmate ko they always uh, told me wag mo siyang bate hindi mo siya bate pero uh, hindi ako makapagsagot sa kanila na hindi ko siya bate or hindi ko siya bate kasi it's wrong at hindi ko po masabi yung sinasabi nilang hindi kita bate or ayoko sa iyo kahit daw pilitin niyang ilabas yun sa bibig niya bakit daw hindi niya daw po yun masabi because she know at a very young age alam niya po na mali yun yung uh, pagsasabi ng hindi kita bate or galit ako sa iyo okay so ay uh, kasi uh, sabi niya uh, she really feels ano yung kapag sinasabihan siya ng mga classmate yung hindi kita bate alam niya na maa-outside siya or uh, hindi siya makakasama kaya ayaw niya yung sabihin to uh, to the others okay so yun uh, miss Nina can you add something okay. about uh, the number I, oh, I'll just add Yes, Miss Alpha. Meron lang ako ng I mm-hmm. to share also my uh, kids during the first. I think the first time they ever spent New Year with their dad. Um, sabi nila they were very worried with how to ask permission from me. So I asked them, "Meron ba tayong problema?" And at ang tanong nila sa akin, "Can we go to to Daddy?" So sabi ko, "Of course you can." Tapos ang nila. Paano ka? So sabi ko, it's okay, don't worry about me. It's okay that you also love your dad the way you love me. And a lot of times, because um, coming from solo parent home, there are all um, issues would also arise about um, conflict loyalties that you have to when when you love for example dad and you are staying with mom then you are bad misa may mga ganun kasing ano impression tayong binibigay sa mga bata so sometimes they feel like what will i do with that okay so as parents again um we have to be good role models in order for our uh, kids to develop the ability you also discuss with them dilemmas, problems, diba? you solve it out, you talk it out with them, you share your you share your confusion to them as well. And then maybe when they were like my my kids' age now, because they're young adults, I also ask their opinion about it. The conversations we had when they were growing up really helped me or really helped them also to be ethical thinkers. And they were given um, they were given their own voice, their own opinion and issues. And I never really stopped them from saying their peace. Kasi de ba yung mga traditions that you cannot speak, I'm the I'm the mom, you're just the child, hindi ka pwede magsalita. Parang gone were the days na ganun na po. That we, of course, give that respect. We allow our kids to voice their own opinions, especially on ethical issues. And of course, as adults now, diba, they will have their own decisions. And of course, they will base their decision on the values that were instilled in them. Okay? Going back to you, Miss Alpha. Thank you. And then the last po, Miss Nina, of course, uh, help children develop self-control and manage feelings effectively. Why? Because often the ability to care for others is overwhelmed by anger, shame, envy, or other negative feelings. So we can teach children that all feelings are okay, but some ways of dealing with them are not useful. Okay? Children need our help learning to cope with feelings in productive ways. So let us try uh, the following tips on this. Let us identify identifying feelings. Name for children their difficult feelings, such as frustration, sadness, and anger, and encourage them to talk to you about what they're feeling that way. And then uh, teach them to uh, the three steps to self-control. Okay? A simple way to help children to manage their feeling is to practice uh, three easy steps together. I think kayo po may mga kanya-kanya po tayong ano, eh, uh, practice in uh, uh, how to uh, control ourselves. Pero ito po yun sa, uh, sa akin. I tried this one. Sabi ko, uh, we need to uh, stop. Okay? Uh, these are easy steps together. Stop. Take a deep breath through the nose and exhale uh, through the mouth and count to five. And then try it when your child is calm. Then when you see her getting upset, remind her about the steps 
and do them together. Okay, and though, of course, uh, resolving conflicts. Practice with your uh, child how to uh, resolve conflicts. Consider a conflict, um, conflict you or your your child witness or experience that turned out badly. And uh, as well, kung maare uh, have a role playing. Okay, role play different ways of responding. Try to achieve mutual understanding, listening, um, listening to and paraphrasing each other's feeling until uh, both people feel understood. So if your child observes you, uh, you experiencing a difficult feeling and uh, is concerned, talk to your child about how you are how you're going to uh, handle that kind of uh, feelings or emotions. And also have a uh, clear limits. Use authority wisely. To set clear boundaries, explain how your limits are based on a reasonable, loving concern for your child's welfare. So, yes, Miss Alpha. Dan dito na tayo towards the end of our webinar for today. I'd like to just zero in dito po sa sinasabi ng managing feelings effectively. I I came across a saying that says, "Do not." Um, handicap your children by making their lives easy. Uh, marami po tayong mga magulang kasi ngayon, diba? they over, they, they are helicopter parents, they over manage their kids' lives or sometimes to the point that they become naman indulgent or permissive and there is really no clear boundaries. So ano pong nangyayari sa bata? They're not taught um, how to manage frustration and sometimes they end up being entitled. Kaya nga po, di ba, ang tinatawag sa henerasyon ngayon ay the entitled generation. Because again, parents are more permissive. Parents would not give clear boundaries. That is why children also do not have the skills or the muscles to manage their emotions. So, ang kailangan po natin as parents, do not um, go overboard, do not over-function because your kids will definitely under-function. Teach them that life is hard. Teach them that you need to be able to cope on I mean, challenges and frustrations early on. Do not act like superheroes because we are not superheroes. Okay? So we allow them one important skill right now is that we, our children should be able to manage their own feelings, especially at times that life becomes cruel. Okay? So yun po ang importante dito, um, dear parents. Ms. Alpha? Thank you, Ms. Nina. Uh, dear parents, I would like to lead to you a short poem about next. Uh, I had a child. If I had a child to raise over again, if I had my, if I had my had my child to raise over again, I'd build self-esteem first and the house later. I'd finger paint more and point the finger less. I would do less correcting and more connecting. I'd take my eyes off my watch and watch with my eyes. I would care to know less and know to care more. I'd take uh, more hikes and fly more kites. I'd stop playing serious and seriously play. I would run through more fields and gates at more stars. I'd do more hugging and less tugging. I'd see the oak tree in the acorn more often. I would be firm less often and I fear much more. I'd model less about the love of power and more about the power of love. So that's a poem about uh, if I had my child raise again so uh, parents uh, raising raising a caring respectful and ethical children is always have been hard work but it's something all of us can do and no work is more important or ultimately more rewarding so that will be all for our talk i hope you learned something from this thank you so much for parents Thank you, Ms. Alpha and Ms. Nina. Today's episode is definitely packed with so many great insights. We learn how providing spaces for open communication, connection, and gratitude, practicing and participating in community service, and allowing children to ask questions and nurturing their curiosities are just some of the many starting points in raising children with values of care, respect, and ethics intrinsic to their being. 
we also got to learn the practical how in doing all of this, something we can start right now within our family. I hope that you, our dear viewers, learned as much as I have and are ready to take and make the seven tips we just heard into reality. That is all for today. And this has been your friend, Bianca Pabotoy, and we hope to see you next time, only here in our sacred space, our peaceful classroom. Bye.